Hello and welcome to class 1 of schizophrenia. This video will cover the classification of schizophrenia. We're going to talk about the symptoms you need to have to actually be diagnosed with schizophrenia, known as positive and negative symptoms. But diagnosing schizophrenia is not foolproof. So we're also going to discuss a number of issues with the diagnosis concerning both validity and reliability. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification, and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos, and the Discord channel. Schizophrenia is a mental health disorder that affects around 1% of the British population. The first symptoms usually appear between 15 and 45, and men are much more likely to develop schizophrenia than women. A common misconception is schizophrenia is about having multiple personalities, but that's a disorder termed Dissociative Personality Disorder. A good definition for schizophrenia would be to describe it as a break from reality. That describes well its two positive symptoms, which are hallucinations and delusions. When I describe the symptoms of schizophrenia, I'll say they're either positive or negative. It's important not to be confused by those terms. Positive means experiences that are in addition to normal experience. So what people with schizophrenia experience that non-sufferers don't. Negative symptoms are a lack of normal experiences or abilities. So what people with schizophrenia don't experience that non-sufferers do. So let's describe some examples of the symptoms. Identification of these symptoms is the job of a clinician and they'll be using a guide, either the Diagnostic Statistical Manual known as the DSM-5 or the ICD, the International Classification of Diseases. To be diagnosed with schizophrenia, two of the following symptoms need to be present for at least a month and one of the symptoms has to be a positive symptom. Hallucinations are a positive symptom. They're additional sensory experiences. Someone could experience visual hallucinations, seeing objects that are distorted, or even things that are not there at all. Auditory hallucinations could be sounds, but more common auditory hallucinations is hearing voices that are often critical and abusive. A separate positive symptom is delusions. These are irrational beliefs about themselves, the people around them, or the world. Example delusions are persecution, feeling like people are out to get them, or delusions of grandeur, like thinking they're royalty. So these are the positive symptoms. There are a range of negative symptoms, but the one I'll focus on are avolition and speech poverty. Avolition is a loss of normal motivation and energy. People with avolition are often less sociable and less likely to look after their personal hygiene. Speech poverty is a loss of depth in the sufferer's communication. So speech can be brief, and when they do talk, it's disorganized, and there might even be missing words. Speech, however, can become so disorganized that random words are added, and the speaker just kind of wanders off the point, jumping from topic to topic. If speech is this disorganized, we will then classify this as a positive symptom. So we've talked about classification systems and some of the key symptoms of schizophrenia. But correctly diagnosing a case of schizophrenia isn't necessarily as simple as checking the symptoms in the DSM. In the rest of this video, we're going to consider both the reliability and validity of schizophrenia. A quick reminder, reliability is if the results we gain from our measuring tool are consistent. So if someone is assessed multiple times, they get the same diagnosis. And validity is about the truth. So it is true that an individual has schizophrenia or that schizophrenia exists as a distinct and clearly definable mental illness. When considering reliability, there is inter-rater reliability. The two medical professionals reach the same diagnosis when assessing the same patient. If one doctor gives a diagnosis of schizophrenia, but the other gives a diagnosis of depression, then we don't have inter-rater reliability. There's also test-retest reliability. This is if the same doctor gives the same diagnosis over time. So, if she assesses someone with having schizophrenia in March, if she changes the diagnosis to OCD in May, there is a lack of test-retest reliability. Evaluating the reliability of schizophrenia diagnosis, Beck in 1963 reviewed the diagnosis of 153 patients who had been diagnosed by multiple doctors. The results showed only a 54% concordance rate between the doctor's diagnosis. This means that the interrelated reliability of schizophrenia diagnosis is low and suggests many people might be being misdiagnosed and potentially receiving inappropriate treatment or worse, not diagnosed and missing out on treatment that they really need. When considering validity, we have a few ideas to discuss. 
Firstly, it's a concept called comorbidity. This simply means that schizophrenia is often diagnosed alongside other mental health conditions. We see evidence for this in research by Buckley in 2009, showing schizophrenia assessed alongside depression 50% of the time, drug abuse 47% of the time, PTSD 29%, OCD 23%. Now this suggests that the treatment of schizophrenia is complicated and there may not be a clear distinction between schizophrenia and other conditions such as depression. Similar to that point, we have the issue of symptom overlap. A number of mental health conditions share the same symptoms as schizophrenia. People with a diagnosis of bipolar, for example, can have both the positive symptoms of hallucinations and delusions. The fact that there is such significant symptom overlap leads us to question if bipolar and schizophrenia are actually two separate and distinct mental health conditions. Perhaps we need to rethink completely the definitions we use for schizophrenia, undermining its validity as a diagnosis. Another consideration is the potential for gender bias in the diagnosis of schizophrenia. Men and women are equally likely to develop schizophrenia over the course of their lifetimes, but we do see gender differences. Men tend to develop symptoms earlier, peaking at around 25. Women are diagnosed on average five years later. Men have worse social functioning and are more likely to abuse alcohol and drugs as a comorbidity. And men are more likely to develop negative symptoms and women positive symptoms. Some psychologists argue that women's experiences of schizophrenia is taken less seriously and is more likely to be underdiagnosed. Cotton suggests this is because women's issues are not taken as seriously because of women's better social ability and coping strategies. Also because of this ability to cope, they're less likely to access treatment. As well as gender bias, there's evidence for culture bias. In particular in the UK, with people from an Afro-Caribbean heritage being nine times more likely to be diagnosed with schizophrenia over the course of their lifetimes than the general population. If a genetic vulnerability was the explanation for the increased risk of diagnosis, we would expect to see high levels of schizophrenia in the Caribbean. However, the range of studies in the 1990s conducted in Jamaica, Trinidad and Barbados showed the same 1% likelihood as in the UK. It suggested the explanation is misdiagnosis, that due to cultural differences, Afro-Caribbeans are being overdiagnosed. Fernando suggests this is due to what he calls a category failure, where Western definitions of mental illness are applied to people from non-Western cultures. One particular aspect of Afro-Caribbean culture that might be being misinterpreted is the religious experience of hearing the voices of angels. Now this is more common and acceptable in Afro-Caribbean society than Western culture. While a Western doctor might see this as a hallucination, an Afro-Caribbean doctor might interpret this as a religious experience. Loring and Powell provide research evidence for diagnostic bias in both gender and race. They sent the same two case studies to 290 psychiatrists. But they said the case studies were either from a white male, a black male, a white female, or a black female, or with no details on gender and race. Now it was found that the sex and race of both the client and the psychiatrist influenced the diagnosis. Women were less likely to be given a diagnosis of schizophrenia and black clients more likely. The most accurate diagnosis was when the client's race and sex was the same as the psychiatrist. Here's a real exam question that you might want to attempt after covering all that information. And if you're a patron at the neuron level or above, you can access a tutorial on PsychBoost in which I talk you through a model answer for this question and general tips. For everyone else, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the videos released right up to your exams. And I'll see you in the next Psych Boost video.